What's up, guys? I'm Ashley Jenkins, and over the weekend, Telltale Games confirmed they're working on not one, but two new episodic game series. The first, confirming last month's rumor, is Game of Thrones. Telltale is partnering with HBO on the series, so expect it to reflect the world of the TV show rather than the books. The series is due out next year and could potentially tie in with the show, which returns in the late March, early April timeframe for its fourth season. Not content to stop there, they've also announced a partnership with Gearbox for a new series called Tales from the Borderlands. The game will include existing Borderlands characters as well as entirely new ones, some of whom will be wannabe vault hunters, according to Gearbox chief Randy Pitchford. They haven't yet confirmed how frequently we'll be able to expect new episodes of either game. The Walking Dead Season 1 released about every two months, with the exception of the last two episodes, which had a shorter gap. Meanwhile, Episode 1 of their The Wolf Among Us series, based on the Fables comic books, came out in October, and the second episode is yet to be dated, causing some concern about their ability to deliver these new projects as well. And while we're talking new game announcements, Hello Games, the studio behind Joe Danger, has announced No Man's Sky, an ambitious, procedurally generated exploration game that will see you traverse the stars from the edge of the universe to its center. You'll exist in a world that shares with other players. Once you discover a planet, that planet will exist for everyone else too. Likewise, if you make major changes to a planet, those changes will also exist for others. The game, heavily inspired by the mysterious worlds of 60s and 70s sci-fi, is a huge undertaking for the small studio. Hello Games' Sean Murray feels this level of daring is necessary to stay creative, saying, A lot of indie game developers make something good and then they plateau. We saw Joe Danger as a stepping stone to get us here so we can risk everything all over again. And next up, Rockstar has announced that their creation tools for GTA Online are coming in a free game update this week. You'll be able to create your own deathmatch and race jobs and publish them for others to play via Social Club. They're also adding a new mode this month, but unfortunately for GTA fans, it's not heists. Instead, it's a mode called Capture, which, as you might guess, is their take on Capture the Flag, in which you'll join one of the four teams to steal stuff from everyone else. More details will be announced sometime next week. Heists, meanwhile, won't be coming until next year. EA is also releasing an update for the PC version of Battlefield 4, and that'll be available sometime today. The update contains fixes for one of the biggest causes of game crashes, collision issues, a defuse mode bug, overall game stability, side gun jitters, frame rate drops around levolutions, passenger aiming, double saves that could result in corrupted save files, and bugs where you could be shot while behind cover. Not to be left out is Dota 2. Blizzard has announced that their next big update for that game will add ranked matchmaking options for hardcore players, which will unlock after you've completed 150 games. Your normal matchmaking ranking won't affect your stats in ranked matchmaking and vice versa. Coaches won't be allowed and all players in your party will have to have it unlocked in order to be able to play. And continuing on with another MOBA, after the community's criticism following the riot's restriction against Pro League of Legends players streaming rival games, they've reconsidered. Director of Esports Waylon Rozelle has offered additional insight into why Riot implemented this policy in the first place, saying, There have been instances of other game studios trying to buy access to League fans by using or trying to use LCS teams and players to promote their competing games on stream. Their intent was to stop this kind of activity, but they've admitted that the policy was a bit too harsh and have now revised it simply to restrict players from paid advertising. While under contract to the LCS, teams and players can't accept sponsorship from other game companies to promote other titles. Besides that, they're free to stream any games they want, says Rizal. And moving on, Crystal Dynamics has announced that Tomb Raider will be seeing a next-gen release to complement the Xbox 360, PS3, and PC versions currently available. The Definitive Edition, which is scheduled for a January 28th release, includes the Tomb of the Lost Adventurer DLC, six outfits for Lara, a digital mini art book, and a digital comic. The game itself will run natively at 1080p on both next-gen consoles, and the textures, shaders, and lighting have all been reworked. The next-gen version will also take advantage of the Tress Effects tech for her hair to simulate how individual strands interact with the environment, previously only available in the PC version. We pulled the game apart and rebuilt it with painstaking detail to add enhanced visual storytelling, says executive producer Scott Amos, who also revealed that Nixus and Sleeping Dogs dev United Front Games helped them to bring the game to the next-gen consoles. Bungie's new project, Destiny, also has an update on when it can be expected on both current and next-gen consoles. The game, which was announced in February this year, will release on September 9th next year. But for those that don't want to wait that long, their beta is still planned for earlier next year for those who pre-order the game with access going first to PS3 and PS4. For us, Destiny represents a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, says Bungie Community Manager DJ. In less happy news, that potential Fallout 4 teaser, the Survivor2299.com, has been revealed as a hoax after Bethesda published a PSA saying, if you don't hear it through an official channel like this, assume all rumors and speculation are false. 
They further clarified, we avoid responding to rumors and speculation, but wanted to respond once people took this hoax more seriously. The hoaxer was also behind the European trademark filing to lend the project more credibility. I wanted to force Bethesda to reveal something. Unfortunately, this plan failed, the anonymous evil genius says. Finally, whistleblower Edward Snowden has released documents that reveal the NSA and the UK's equivalent, GCHQ, obtained access to discussions between players on Xbox Live and also infiltrated games like World of Warcraft and Second Life in a bid to hunt down terrorists in what they believe to be a target-rich environment. Since gamers largely operate in an anonymous ecosystem of real-time private communication without much in the way of monitoring, in their eyes, the perfect place for terrorists to hide in plain sight. Reportedly, there were so many agents operating within the game world that they required a deconfliction group to ensure they didn't accidentally investigate one another. And in spite of all that, not a single foul plot has been uncovered. This report follows the news that Microsoft, Apple, Facebook, Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, Yahoo, and AOL have gathered together to demand the government reform their surveillance policies. And last week's report that Microsoft is doubling down on their own data protection to prevent such unauthorized snooping. And that's the news today. How frequently do you think episodic game content needs to be released to keep your interest? Let us know in the comments below. Then check out roosterteeth.com to find out who we've nominated for the best TV, movies, and games of the year in the annual Podcast Awards.